Good day, folks. I'm Tim, and you're watching The Adventures of Two-Wheel Tim. Today is day two of my three-day weekend adventure, and today I'm going to be riding 17-mile drive and riding near Pebble Beach Golf Course. It rained most of the night, and so all the rain has subsided for the most part. It's still really cloudy and really, really windy. Today it's sweatshirt, pants, and waterproof boots. There's lots of debris and water on the road. Stick around and join me for part three of Beast Around the Bay. After a day of clear skies, riding from Santa Cruz to Monterey, a heavy rainstorm moved in and dropped about an inch of rain overnight. So it got pretty stormy last night. There's a lot of water and debris on the trail. Despite some fairly strong winds, a lot of debris and the threat of rain. It was still a great day for a ride. Much of the Monterey Bay Coastal Recreation Trail was built on the old Southern Pacific Rail Line that ran through the heart of Monterey's Cannery Road. It's remnants apparent by this old Southern Pacific Railroad caboose. One of Monterey's most popular attractions is the Monterey Bay Aquarium. A must-see if you visit Monterey, but just be prepared to stand in line. As the coastal trail continues, it passes Monterey's old tin cannery, which is now an indoor mall housing clothing stores, food courts, souvenir shops, and more. The Monterey Bay Coastal Trail is very popular with locals and visitors alike and provides wonderful views of the Monterey Bay and even has some public swimming areas. As the Monterey Bay Coastal Trail comes to an end, the route continues through Pacific Grove on Ocean View Boulevard. Springtime on Ocean View Boulevard is a sight to behold as the pink blossoms on the coastal ice plants come into full bloom. While making your way around the Monterey Peninsula toward Asilomar State Beach, the coast gets rugged, the ocean gets rougher, and the winds get stronger. The ocean also gets bluer and the sand gets lighter. About eight miles into my ride, I finally reached the entrance to 17 mile drive. really windy and it's probably going to be really hard to hear me but it's a beautiful day. For golf enthusiasts, there are seven golf courses in the area, including Spyglass at Pebble Beach and the famous Pebble Beach Golf Links, home of the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am tournament held in February each year. As 17 Mile Drive continues south toward Carmel, the route turns slightly inland away from the ocean. As the route gets fast and windy, it becomes an exhilarating ride if you're an adrenaline enthusiast. Around 14 miles into my ride was one of 17 Mile Drive's most iconic symbols. The Lone Cypress is one of the most photographed trees in North America. From here, the speed picks up as the road continues to wind its way toward the Carmel Valley.
17 mile drive was identified by red dash lines down the middle of the road that helped some 1.5 million visitors annually stay on course. Eighteen miles into my ride, the road began to climb northeast at an average grade of around 8% while bringing into view colorful canyons and the coastal highlands. As the road begins to wind to the northwest, it brings into view Highway 1 before descending back into Pacific Grove. The descent back to the Monterey Peninsula was fast and windy, and several times I reached 30 to 35 miles per hour. In the wet, windy, windy conditions, the V Speedster tires provided stable traction through the adverse conditions. This has just been a most incredible ride. There's lots of debris and water on the road. The V Speedster tires are amazing. This is just the best ever. As I left 17 mile drive, you catch a glimpse of why this is best experienced on a bike. Despite the weather's deterioration from earlier in the day, you can see here how the crowds began to arrive on this holiday weekend. This is Custom House. It was registered as California State Historical Landmark number one on June 1st, 1932. As I made my way back on the debris covered trail with remnants of rain on my lens, my wet, wild and windy day was quickly coming to an end. Okay, that was about 31 miles, about 17 mile drive through Spyglass at Pebble Beach. There was a lot of climbing. It was a beautiful day, even though it was misty and kind of wet. The Tetro 4 piston brakes did great through all that moisture. The V Speedster tires, uh, I can't say enough about them. They have plenty of tread to handle all that wet pavement and all the debris that you saw me ride through. I made it back with about 73% battery. Uh, I did use pass one a lot on some of the climbs I used pass three, never went above pass three. But on a lot of those descents, I was at zero. I was just pedaling and coasting and just enjoying the ride. Got up to about 36 miles per hour. It's just a, an amazing day. Tomorrow's going to be about a 45 to 50 mile ride home through Elkhorn Slough. I just had my first setback. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. If you haven't done so, please be sure to subscribe, like, hit the bell for notifications. Feel free to add your comments or questions below. I really appreciate you being here and we'll see you on the next one.